Right, in this video, we'll take a look at uh, a very popular part of financial markets, the indices. Basically, lots of people use them. Fund managers use them as a benchmark. Uh, people who trade derivatives or do spread betting use them all the time. You can actually bet on them. And uh, we need to know, essentially, what they are, focusing on the UK market and the FTSE series, as it's called. Uh, FTSE being short for Financial Times Stock Exchange. The Financial Times and London Stock Exchange being originally responsible for compiling the index. So, we use the UK indices uh, just as a sort of walkthrough, what indices are all about, roughly how they're put together, and their kind of uses. Okay, so what is an index? Well, let's put one together. Very simple index. Uh, rather than doing the FTSE 100, that will be a little laborious in a video of this length, let's do the TIM 3. All right, so to put an index together, what I need to do is find some constituents, find something to go in it. So let's have three companies, um, simply called A, B, and C. And uh, there are those three companies, so it's going to be an index of just three firms. Um, and let's say, basically, the current share price is one pound for A, two pound for B, and three pound for C. And the number of shares each company has an issue. Uh, they're slightly different sizes, these companies. So let's say that the first company has 1,000 shares in issue. Uh, company B has 500 shares in issue. And company C, just 200. From there, we could work out what's called a market capitalization. We could take the share price, multiply by the number of shares they've issued, and are out there trading, and come up with a, a market cap. So let's do that, and then see where we've got to. So market capitalization, multiplying that by that is a thousand pounds for company A. Um, also a thousand pounds for company B, and six hundred pounds for company C. So the total market capitalization of these three companies at the moment, two thousand six hundred pounds. The total share prices, six pounds. So far, so what? Well, we're aiming to put something together, an index, that captures the performance of these three companies in one number. That's what indices do. And it's just three companies here, so you might say, well, an index is a little bit over the top. But imagine if you're doing 100 or 500, in the case of the S&P 500, uh, obviously the snapshot becomes more useful. So how would that work? Well, um, let's move things on, let's say 12 months. So what's happened? Let's assume none of these companies have issued any more shares, but the share prices have changed. So a year later. Now the share prices were one pound, two pound, and three pounds. So let's say that company A has had a tremendous year, share price is now five pounds. Let's say company B, uh, not a bad year, share price has doubled to four pounds. And let's say company C, um, has had a less successful year, and the share price has dropped to a pound. Now, the revised share prices just added up, five, nine, ten. And the revised market capitalizations, what I'm going to do this time is take the new share prices and multiply by the number of shares still in issue, if you like. Nothing much has changed there. Um, so basically, let's do that. Let's say 1,000 times 5, so new market capitalization for company A, £5,000. New market capitalization for company B, 4 times 5, so that's £2,000. And the new market capitalization for company C, 200 So, combine those, 7,200. Now, that's a lot of numbers, and what's the point? Well, here's the question. How do I put an index together that shows the performance of these companies over time? And there isn't one answer to that question. Most indices, like the UK indices, work off market capitalization. They say you want to size weight the indices. So, what I would do is this. The FTSE 100 started back in the 1980s at 1,000 points. So, if I started my index a year ago, 
at a thousand points. What I could now do to work out where it is now is take the market capitalization now compared to the market capitalization a year ago. And that will give me my new index level. And I make that, if I've done the maths correctly, about 2777. So using market capitalization, the index has almost trebled over the year. But is there another way to look at this? What if I take the Dow Jones approach in the US and just do it on share prices? Um, in which case, my 1,000 index, 1,000 is an arbitrary figure, I could have started at 100, but most started at 1,000, multiplied by the share price now, and the share price as it was a year ago, gives me more like that. So you can see, using share prices, the index has gone up, but not as far as using market capitalizations. And uh, that's got a lot to do with the fact that the companies are different sizes. So although company C has had a pretty poor year, using market capitalization, it's only a little, it's only a little small company compared to these two, especially company A, so its impact on the index is more muted. Uh, and you'll find people will debate the merits of using a share price. That's fairly unusual nowadays, as I say, the Dow Jones still does, versus something like the FTSE 100. Most indices are put together by comparing market capitalizations over time. So a few observations. Number one, you can't directly compare the FTSE 100 and the Dow Jones, because they're constructed differently. Uh, they will sort of follow each other, and they often do, but just be aware that they're actually put together on a different basis. The Dow Jones is only 30 stocks, the FTSE is 100, and the Dow Jones is price weighted, whereas the FTSE is, if you like, a value or market capitalization weighted. Um, next thing is 1,000 points is where the FTSE started in the early 1980s. So the FTSE 100 index isn't at either of these two levels now, it's at more like uh, 5,800 points. So could you say that between the early 1980s and now, the FTSE has increased roughly six times? Well, you can, but be careful what you read into that, because quite a bit of that change is inflation. It's not necessarily the case. You can simply say the value of companies has gone up six times, because um, you may not even be looking at the same companies. And that's because the membership of this sort of club, created as an index, changes. Um, so, that's the next question. If we look at the, um, the FTSE 100, for example, that is a club of, let's say, 100 members, chosen on the basis largely of size. So, what are the entry criteria? This is just worth bearing in mind. Um, largely, in a market capitalization driven index, it will be size. So in other words, if you ranked every single share in the UK market, and there's a lot more than 100 of them, um, top to bottom by market capitalization, you'd in theory slice off once you got to 100. Um, but there's a bit more to it than that, um, because obviously the people who uh, run the index want to try and keep it as respectable as possible, if you like. So there are uh, one or two extra criteria. For example, to be in the FTSE 100 at the London Stock Exchange, you have to accept certain rules and regulations. Um, purple book, they're called. So you've got to accept the fact that people are going to be looking at you quite closely because you're a member of the biggest club, if you like, in the UK market. So investors are going to want more information. They're going to want, to want it more often. You're going to have to give um, details away of key transactions through regulatory news feeds and all that good stuff. Um, and you need to be prepared to make a decent number of your company's shares available to the investing public. You cannot be a member of the FTSE 100 Club if only, say, 5% of your total shares can be traded by the likes of me, and the other 95% are held back by the directors. That's not really playing the game properly. So you need a decent uh, free float, as they call it, in order to join this FTSE 100 Club. In other words, people have got to be able to buy the shares if you're in that club. Um, so that's just a, a quick guide to some of the sort of entry criteria to get into something like the FTSE 100. Now, how many UK indices are there? And the answer is an awful lot. 
So let's just have a run through one or two of the key ones. Because if you can do the top 100 companies, you can presumably do um, as many as you like. So, yes, um, there is a club of the top 100 companies in the UK chosen by market capitalization. But there's also an index based on the value of the next 250 biggest. Uh, and a common mistake worth pointing out at this point is that um, it is the next 250 biggest, it's not the FTSE 100 and another 150. Um, combine them, you'd get the 350. Um, and then carry on down in terms of size ranking, you hit the small caps, carry on further still, and you hit the fledglings, and so on. Um, so in other words, depending on which part of the market you're interested in, you might pick a different index. If you're, if you're interested in investing in mid caps, as they're called, maybe this is a more useful index than that one. So indices are, are constructed with different members in according to what people want. In the last um, tech boom, people just wanted to know what the biggest technology stocks were in the UK. That's all they wanted to know. Not just the biggest stocks, not just the biggest, you know, the FTSE 100's got all sorts in it, banks, oil companies. People said, give us the biggest 100 technology stocks, because it's not going to be that lot. Um, so hence the uh, tech mark 100. The people who put the indices together went away and said, okay, fine, we'll build an index that's got the top 100 technology stocks by market capitalization. And you can follow that if you want. You can trade that, you can use that as a benchmark if you're a technology fund manager, for example. So once you get the hang of indices, they can be designed, frankly, um, to include whatever members of a club you like. Some of the investment banks come up with their own. They come up with their Global Titans 30. That's uh, Global Titans, some random definition of big and important that a bank's come up with. And there are 30 of them, and they could be listed anywhere in the world, in theory. So uh, basically, once you get the hang of an index, in theory, it can be designed to give you the um, stocks that you want to follow as its components. So um, anything else to know about indices? Well, as I say, one thing to watch out for is the components change. So in the UK, there is a quarterly review, and membership of each index is changed at that review. So companies literally come up and join the club and others drop out. To keep the membership relatively consistent, uh, normally to join the club, you need a market capitalization that puts you um, around about position 90 or better. And to fall out, you normally have to have a market capitalization that will take you down to around 111. Um, so they try and keep the components of the club fairly consistent, because otherwise what will happen is the index funds will just grab new members and dump companies being ejected and you get a lot of share price volatility simply caused by the way the index is put together. So quarterly reviews and the constituents change. Most of the companies that were there in the mid-80s are no longer there. New ones have come in and replaced them. Uh, and the other thing is, um, just bear in mind that indices are put together on different bases. So you have got that little issue of market capitalization weighting versus price weighting. And then you've also got the issue of, um, does the index do what I want? As an investor, you have to ask yourself the question, if I'm going to use an index to benchmark my own portfolio, which one am I going to pick and how representative of what I invest in is it? There are lots of indices around, so well worth having a good look for the one that best suits you.